Welcome to the Bariatric Bros Podcast, where we're living that bariatric life and eating like men. I'm Mike Alley. I'm a former big guy and a foodie who had bariatric surgery and have already lost over 135 pounds. Thank you for hanging out with me today. If you are just joining us, we hope you go back and listen to our other episodes, kind of catch you up on where we are. But hey, if uh, if you're one of our regulars, then thanks for hanging today. We've got a good episode for you. Going to be interviewing one of our bariatric bros, something I've been wanting to do for a while. And we're also going to tell you about the walk from obesity a little bit later on. Um, and got a brand new thing coming up in just a couple of minutes. We are going to do a bariatric bro shout out. Yep, one of our cool bariatric bros. We're going to tell you about him. Right now, though, what I hope you will do is follow us on all our social media. We are at Bariatric Bros on Facebook and on Twitter and on Instagram and anywhere else pretty much you can find us. We've got a YouTube channel where you can find other cool features like our Bariatric Bros test kitchen. And of course, you can visit our website at bariatricbros.com. And you can always email us. We'd love to hear from you. It's so simple and easy, bariatricbros at gmail.com. Over the last few weeks, a few of you have asked how you can really help support the show and what we're doing here at Bariatric Bros. And of course, part of it is you're doing it right now. You're listening to the podcast. If you will like it and review it, that helps. If you will share it with friends and family, other folks in your bariatric community, that would be great too. But a few of you have wanted to help in a more substantial way. And so we did sign up for this cool site called Buy Me a Cup of Coffee. And it's a way that you can financially support the show if you'd like to. Um, we've got it in the show notes under the support the show link. And it's real simple. You don't have to download anything or do anything. You can just uh, make a donation, um, Google Pay or Apple Pay or uh, PayPal, whatever. And uh, it goes right to help us continue to build the show and do more things here. So if you want to support us, you can go there again to the support the show link in the show notes. And that's how you do it. Well, I'm very excited about this brand new feature we're just starting this week. It's our Bariatric Bros shout out. We are going to be highlighting one of our Bariatric Bros each episode just because of who they are and hope that you'll follow them on social and just, you know what, give them a little shot of positivity in their life. And so our very first one is a cool guy named Brett Edwards. And Brett is from Australia i got to tell you, have not met Brett in real life, only over Instagram, but really, really love this dude. He, of course, has lost the weight after uh, his procedure back in 2018. He gets online almost every single day with so much positive energy and, and real. He's telling you when it's down, and he's in Melbourne right now where they're like in full lockdown because of covid but he is still radiating positive energy. And one cool thing that he's been doing, if you follow our Instagram, we've been sharing this. He does these cool 12-minute workouts. And you basically don't need to have any workout knowledge at all. It's basically you and a chair. And Brett has designed this very kind of low-impact workout to just get you moving, even if you're stuck inside. That's why we've been sharing it. Like I said, he's a great guy, and show him a little bariatric bro's love. Brett, congratulations. You're our very first bariatric bro shout out. Now, since I've started this podcast, a lot of it has been my story and my journey, but I never wanted this to be just about me. I want this to be about the Bariatric Bros community, the guys that are out there that have had this procedure and their stories and how they're dealing with things and what their relationship to food is. And our first one is a great guy that I met a few weeks back named Phil Chorney. Phil's 35 years old. He's a husband and a father, and he got sleeve back in February and has been doing great. Now, I will say because of the pandemic, we met outdoors on Phil's front porch, so you're going to hear some nature sounds, but actually it, it came out pretty well. And so I think you're really going to enjoy my conversation with Phil. I started 
by asking him how he got interested in bariatric surgery. And he told me that it was his wife that brought him the idea. She had actually was the one who had researched the procedure and she was considering it for herself. And, you know, at first I was resistance, not the right word. Apprehensive is probably a better word. Right. Because I grew up. I mean, straight up athlete, you know, wrestled in high school, baseball, high school, soccer in high school, you know, weight was never, re- I mean, I was I think a little overweight, but like nothing, I was very athletic. You know, I wrestled, you know, varsity in high school. Wrestling, and, you want to have yeah. a little meat on you. Yeah, right? yeah. And I was always cutting weight and like I always managed my weight appropriately. But it really, my, you know, my weight gaining didn't occur until college when I discovered the wonders and joys of college. There you go. And um, about, I don't know, 12, 14 years ago, I guess, I tore my ACL playing soccer and, uh, you know, so I stopped a lot of activity, but I was still heavy. And I had lost weight on my own. I'd, you know, done the whole trainer and tracking my food. And I'd... I was going to say, had you done, yeah, like, so... so you'd done that? Had you done any of the meal programs or Tried anything? Tried it all. Weight or Watchers. Just... Okay. You know, I lost Adkins, yeah, other, yeah, 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 whatever. I tried, yeah, I lost, like, 40 pounds on Weight Watchers a couple of years ago. Sure. You know, th- that didn't stick. I did the whole trainer thing, lost 50 pounds with a trainer documenting everything I ate. Like, you yeah. know, I was lifting three days a week. Didn't stick, right? I like food. I'm a foodie. I'm a barbecue guy. Um, you know, I, I like going out to eat, you know, that whole thing. Sure. And so I didn't really give the surgery much thought at first. We went to a session, and then we I just started talking to some people. Because most of the people my wife had talked to were female friends of hers. And um, I was still very apprehensive. And then I ran, I randomly, maybe back last end of last summer, I think, ran into a buddy of mine who, um, big guy, we call him Big Mike. And uh, he was very, very overweight and did the procedure. And he didn't post on social media. I was like, where did Mike go? Like, I hadn't seen him for like a year on social media. And all of a sudden, he pops up on social media. And I was like, what? Like, what just happened? And, and I hit so I hit him up. Now, did he pop up and say, oh, I had the no, surgery? No, he, he just popped up. He just popped so up. Did you have that like, yeah, I was oh, like, is he sick? I was like, what the heck is going on? Right, 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 right. So I hit him up on, on Instagram. I was like, dude, what's going on? He's like, well, I had this procedure. I was like, can we, do you mind if I? Talk, yeah, because at that point right. I didn't have a male reference to kind of like what it was it was going on. You right. know, I know some female references, and like you know, I'm stubborn. I'm stubborn <laughs> as a mule, and I was like, oh, you know, because I kept saying to myself, you know, I got two kids. I got two, a two. Uh, well, at the time she was one, and you know, a three year old. You know, I don't, I don't have any like real comorbidities except for I just started. We're using a CPAP last year for sleep apnea, but other than that, my blood pressure is fine. My cholesterol is a little high, but. Who's isn't, right. you know. So you're heavy, but you're heavy, pretty but, healthy. But pretty healthy, yeah. relatively healthy. And um, um, and so after talking to this guy, I was like, man, you know, that really kind of set my my mindset. Obviously, with my wife, you know, really wanting to do it for herself. Um, and that sent me down the path of just talking to some other people. I had some female friends who I knew had done it. So I started engaging them in the conversation of like, how did this work for you? What was it like? You know, that sort of thing. I've never had major surgery. You know, so except for, you know, the old snip snip. Right. And so like that was no big deal. But like surgery is scary. You know, sure. any way any way you put it, right? Right. And I was like, Man, this is gonna be uh an adventure and um So for you it wasn't like that thing like in my case where the doctor was like blood pressure. Yeah. You know, this is getting bad, you're gonna yeah. you're gonna need to get some blood pressure meds. No, and no. I just went yeah, I don't want to do that. What other options? Right. You didn't really. No, have my that doctor kind was on of... my case for losing weight, and like they, right. you know, you know, my wife and I decided like we want to be healthy for our kids. You know, we want to be around. Like I'm an active guy. I like hiking. I like you know fishing. I, you know, I like biking. I, you know, I like being outside. You know, I like all those camping. Like I like doing things. Right. Um, and so just kind of that with the knowledge that like I want to be around for my kids, and you know, I don't want to. I don't have diabetes, you know, anything like that. Right. No, the knowledge that, like, if I nip this right now at the age of 35, like, that's going to prolong my life exponentially. And that was my main – that and my wife were the two main driving factors in making this decision. Yeah. And I got to tell you, I'm – I try not to live with regrets. Yeah. So I don't look back. Sure. I'm so thrilled at where I've come. And the one thing I said, the the – super added benefit to me beyond my blood pressure being back to normal and not needing to go on meds is the fact of my knees and ankles thank me so much for this. <laughs> yeah, I know that. They just like every day when I'm walking the dog and we're going a mile or two miles and I get home and I'm like, wow, I didn't have to stop and oh, I don't hurt the next day. That part, 
you know, if there's any kind of little regret back in my head is like, man, I could have done this 20 sure. years ago and, you know, maybe been a bit more active and not done some of probably the yeah, joint damage that I did. For sure. as I'm, I'm about 20 years older than you. But um, so you talked about one of the things that, that I'm big on, and that is that uh, – uh, being a foodie and just loving food. Yeah. And so you were active. It wasn't that you were uh, overly heavy, but then things happened and it just keeps going and going. Yeah, I mean, it just kind of slips in there. Yeah, and I love beer, right? right. I, I sure. You know, I'm not like a big drinker, but right. I like beer. I have, you know, being in the music industry, you're around, you're around beer constantly at events and obviously right. college, like, and we should mention you're a talent buyer for like three different. Yeah, I'm a talent buyer for like four breweries. Four breweries. Four so breweries. Yeah, and you're and I, kind of around it. Like, yeah, when and, you're there. and I own my music festival, and mm-hmm. I manage you know touring nationally acts, and I have a food company with one of my music clients. We we have a barbecue, you know, hot sauce spice rub company, and so I do a lot of things around you know this kind of the food and beverage industry in general, just the nature of the beast, and. You know, unhealthy choices plus, you know, eating late night and, you know, when you're at a venue, you're there till 1 a.m. So you got that, you know, the post show pizzas and, you know, but you've already had your dinner, you know, that the venue provides pre show and like it's all carbs it's and all fat. It's all carbs and, and fat, right? Yeah. Like, it's, it's, you, and you, know, you don't work it off. And you don't work it off. I mean, you're driving or sleeping. Right, exactly. So, so it adds on after, you know, almost, let's see, what am I, thir- so 15 years of this, right. you know, plus college. Um, you know, plus, you know, cooking my own style of food was never like, I was never really conscious about fat or, or, you know, carbohydrates or anything. Mm -hmm. Like I'm a sandwich guy. I can make anything into a sandwich. There you go. Like, so, you know, I, I, I claim fame to the, the, the trifecta cheesesteak challenge in Philadelphia in college. Oh, tell me. I got to hear about that. Pat's Jim and Gino's all in one sitting. Oh my God. Yeah. Okay. No, I'm all right. I'm sorry. <laughs> I blanked there for just a minute. I, well, I, I passed that mm. down as a fraternity task. Okay. Uh, I used to make the pledges after I completed it, drive up to Philly. They have to bring them back hot and consume all three in one single sitting. Oh if they God. didn't, they have to go back up and bring like and the key was hot, right? right? They had to bring it back hot. And, and it took them a while to figure out you wrap it in foil and put it in a cooler. Like, there you go. No one, very few people passed it the first time, but I, I digress. So, <laughs> you know, unhealthy choices in the college years led to unhealthy choices later on. And leading up to the surgery, I lost about. 30 pounds, give or take, mm-hmm. between, um, like, the end of the year. I quit. I didn't – haven't had a sip of beer. Well, I've had one sip, literally one sip of beer. But right. in general, I haven't really had any alcohol since uh, end of – since New Year's. You had the procedure in February. I had the procedure in February. And so you're about five months – you're about yeah, just over five and months I'm a, in. And I'm down about 115 pounds overall. Wow. Yeah. Now, do you have a – Goal set in yeah, mind. Yeah, so the, the, where you want to get, yeah, like how think, much more you want to do. Yeah, so most of the doctors and the folks in the medical industry I've talked to said I'll get down. They think I'll be around like one seventy ish or okay. so. Um, I'm at two twenty one as of my weigh in this morning at at uh, Core Life. Okay, my surgical I got had surgery at two ninety four. And my heavyweight was 331, 334. My wife and I go back and forth. She says 331. I thought it was 334. I can't remember <laughs> exactly. But give or take about 115 pounds lost since the uh, beginning. Go with a higher. It's more, yeah, it sounds better. I, you know, it just sounds more But impressive. more importantly, like, I feel good. Right. You know, I feel, I haven't felt this way. My energy is way up. Um, yeah, it's, it's a really bizarre feeling. You know, I went from a size 52 waist to a size 38 waist in pants so mm. far and dropping, like, rapidly a 4x shirt to a 2x is almost big um so some shirts are xls yeah i mean man i I wish i could tell you how much clothes i have in the basement like oh insane amounts of like garbage bags piles that's what we did i literally dropped off there's a uh there's a great uh charity in town here called helping up mission that helps a lot of homeless guys and they they take clothes yeah. for guys who need them, but they especially need big guy clothes. Yeah, because make sure after we wear po- them out. Yeah, after this podcast, make sure you uh, you let me know. I'm I'm saving some for my will- father in law. He's a bigger dude himself. Sure. Um, and then I'm also going to offer up. I mean, it's a lot of nice work clothes, like Brooks Brothers shirts. That's and, like, and that's polo. what they do is to get people like interview. Right. The guys don't have good clothes. Yeah, and I'm like suits. I literally took bags and yeah. bags of stuff down there yep. when I just started going through the closet. And I know there were guys bigger than me on on the program, so I'm yeah. going to offer some stuff up to guys in transition and all, all yeah. that. I mean, it's pretty wild, you know. I, I I can't even begin to tell you how that feels. <laughs> yeah. Um. It's been a really remarkable thus far. And and the other cool thing is like one of my um, music clients, he's a former Navy guy. He's lost 
uh, I think about 50 or 60 pounds himself. And he was not like overweight by any means, but now he's jacked. Wow. Um, we, we call it the, I jokingly and hope he doesn't get mad at me for saying this, but the new girl, the new girlfriend, uh, r- routine. <laughs> oh, gotcha. Right. So he's doing right. like 200 push ups a day and 150 sit ups a day. So I've copied that. I'm up to about 100 to 120 push ups a day and wow. doing sit ups. Just, okay. You know, doing the things because with COVID, I couldn't hit the gym. And this sure. is all without gym workout. This is like me jumping up on my Yeti cooler or like me lifting up my trailer doing deadlifts or push ups every day, you know, right. running up and down my steps. Throwing like taking my kids, I use my kids as weights. You know, I yeah. toss them up in the air and catch them like a you know a weighted medicine ball just yeah. for fun. You know, wow. but the ability to do that, you know, swimming. You know, we I swim with my kids like mm. all the time now. You know, that is so cool. Kayaking. My wife and I, I bought her a kayak not too long. I've had a Ooh. kayak for a couple years. Okay, and we go. You know, for, for her surgery, we went out like two times a week and we do about seven kilometers. Mm. You burn eleven hundred calories uh, just kayaking. You know, it's a really great exercise, great upper body, great core. You know, core. So finding ways to be active outside side it really like it makes it fun you know for me it was i could finally do that you know it wasn't like yeah. i mean i honestly avoided it it wasn't my wife would say let's you know i'm gonna go take a walk yeah and i'm saying okay well where do you want to go yeah and if it wasn't like okay we're gonna do these two streets and come back sure if it was longer than that it'd be like eh, i don't know you go ahead. Uh-huh. I'll catch you the next time. Because honestly, it would I would either hurt yeah. the ankles or the knees would hurt. I would get I'd have to stop along the way. It was just, you know, it just wasn't a thing I did. Yeah. Um, and so, I will say that this this you know COVID time has actually gotten me walking even more than I was previous. Oh, I and don't doubt it because you know it's something to do. And you're <laughs> you outside know? and it's safe and healthy and and like. Right. I can't explain it, but I woke up from surgery and my brain flipped. And I know people say that that happens. Mm -hmm. I can attest. It really happens. I mean, it changed my outlook on food. And what's even cooler is I've embraced, like, my love of cooking. Like, I think during COVID, we've ordered food out once. Wow. Once. Okay. I love smoking meat, right? So finding ways to do that, you know, with sugar-free, you know, sugar-free, you know, gluten-free glazes – and like finding different things has been incredible and experimenting. Like made um early on made like lamb kebabs. You know, mm. ground, you took ground lamb, you know, oh. a bunch of spices and used cauliflower rice and had lamb kebabs, you know? And like that's fantastic. High protein, low fat, like no carbs. And it's just such a satisfying and then tzatziki, which is just Greek yogurt with dill and cucumber, like right. you know, these are all things that are approved for for guys like you and me and women on who've, you know, post surgery and like it's such an incredibly healthy but satisfying meal. Mm. You know, it's almost a gourmet gourmet meal in a lot of ways. You right. know? So embracing that has been just I mean, that's one exam many many examples has been absolutely just fun. So for you, it was like you said, kind of right after surgery. Yeah, my brain flipped. I woke up. Okay, I, I, my need for food changed mm-hmm. from being oh, you know, let me just stuff my face or like you, you know, right. to like eh, I'm not really hungry, but I know I need to eat because I know my body needs this amount of protein. It became very scientific and regimented. Sure. And once that happened, it was like okay, how do I find ways to enjoy this? Right, because I should enjoy food. Food is something to be enjoyed, right? Yeah. Like there's definitely, but like how do you do it in an appropriate way that's appropriate for your body? I very much had it going into the eight to ten weeks between pre-op, two weeks pre-op, if you had to do liquids. I did, yeah. I did the same. And then those eight weeks post-op where you're going through liquids to uh, puree to soft and all of this. And I was already prepped for, okay, this isn't going to be the most fun I've ever had. Sure. But I also, like, how do I make this – Better. Yeah. How do I have a variety of things? I tried so many things ahead of time mm-hmm. so that I knew, like, I really love this, 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 and this. You know, for, yeah. for liquid, soft food, pudding, yogurts, that kind of thing. Sure. I knew exactly what I wanted. Uh-huh. I knew the flavors I wanted. What was your favorite soft, and, soft food type of um, thing? I, I enjoy sweet things, but that's not my trigger. I love savory food. And almost everything is geared towards the candy flavors. Right. It's, let's have sweet and chocolate yeah. and you can have pudding and we'll make this yogurt taste like this and yeah. you can add this in. And so the best thing for me were the broths. Okay. Man, having just some chicken broth or beef broth, uh-huh. the salty and <laughs> yeah. warm and or taking um, um, some of the protein, uh, like the chicken noodle soup mm-hmm. protein that was the liquid yeah. but had more protein in it. And, you know, it doesn't taste like 
chicken right, noodle sure, noodle. Course. But but you know what? After being on liquids for two, it was a great yeah. kind of addition into that yeah. program, and you were getting the protein. So all that went well. And I tell you, the thing that I think most people really get freaked out about is the puree stage. Yeah, they, I agree. And I said, look at it like this. And I said, we need to rebrand this as yeah. the pate stage. Pate stage. <laughs> and I said, I started creating, and I love to cook as well, and I always have. Yeah. So I already was in my head going, okay, I have my little bullet blender mm -hmm. that'll mash it into nothing. Yeah. So I was like, okay, so we're going to take some shrimp in a pan, and we're going to heat it, and we're going to put a little you know, broth on that. And then we're going to spice it and put some Old Bay and whatever. Yeah. And then we're going to pop it in the blender. And then we're going to blend it down. And now you've got shrimp pate. Yeah. And it was like warm shrimp pate or I hit it with a little teriyaki or a little whatever. Yeah. Same thing with chicken. I created these pate. My wife joked. She said, you should sell this. You could make money because everybody was complaining about the pates. And he said, the, it's, I mean, it's not the most, you've got to get past the texture. Right. But if you can do that texture. Yeah. You can have a blast with that. Yeah, absolutely. For me, it was ricotta bake. Oh, yeah. That was just like... That's amazing. Once I did that, it was like, okay, now this is fun. Mm -hmm. And then I started doing like really, really like smooth, creamy chicken salads with like, okay, let me try it with guacamole. Right. Or let me try it with tzatziki. Well, you, you know? can even plop some mayo yeah. in there in your... You know, you just got to look at your numbers. Exactly. You know, it's, it's a numbers following game. your numbers. So right. saying that, these for the first couple of weeks... Post op. Someone wrote to me this week who's getting ready to have the surgery and really wanted to hear about the experience like those first two weeks post op. You and I kind of already talked about the fact that we really did yeah. not have any I went up, pain after I was surgery. Up working a concert the week after. I shouldn't have, right. but I did. Like, yeah. I wasn't moving. I was sitting in a chair and, like, you know, my client was doing a show, but, like, Maybe it was two weeks, but it was like it was really soon. I mean, I wasn't driving yet, or I just started. It was like, right. you know, I was up up in my desk in my home office a couple days after. I mean, I slept in the recliner for two weeks just because getting sure. up was, you know, still not the most comfortable thing in the world. But like, in, I didn't take any pain meds. You know, I didn't take any of the narcotics. I, uh, you know, I did what he told me, but the bare minimum took right. the Tylenol. Like, I told everybody, I said it was like if you did a hundred sit ups and you hadn't done sit ups before and you did a hundred sit ups. Yeah. Your abdomen was really tight. Yeah. And like, say, getting up in and up and out of the chair. Yeah. Was difficult. So, surgically, you know, it went well. There are people that have issues. Yeah. As I say every week. I'm not a doctor, yeah. so this is just our personal experiences and opinions. I think um, the mental game going, like coming in to surgery and coming mm -hmm. out of surgery, if your head's in the right place, I think the physical part follows, mm -hmm. and it's natural to have some fear. Like you know, the moment they put the anesthesia in, like or we're about to, I was definitely nervous. Like I never had major surgery before. Like got a little woozy. But man, when I told you, I woke up, I got out of bed for that first walk, and like everything had changed. Yeah, and it's mind blowing how that happens. And for you, again, because there wasn't the you know kind of come to Jesus thing with your doctor about right. oh, you better do this or else. It right. was really you going, I just need to make this life change. For yeah, me. exactly. For me, it was the doctor finally yeah. looking at me and going, "Hey, this blood pressure." And I wasn't like, "You're going to die," but right. it was a choice of meds yeah. or let's do something. And so I did go in. I had the day before, I had a little bit of anxiety going, I am volunteering to do this. Right. But then as soon as you wake up in recovery, you go, oh, I'm fine. You know, I was yeah. like, ah, what? You know, why was I thinking about this? Yeah, this is fine. Yeah. So um, how's your relationship with food now that you're back into kind of a regular eating pattern? Uh, it's it's interesting because like my choices are obviously very different. Okay. But I still make, you know, I still am enjoying the, the protein. Like, I've always liked protein, you know? Me too. <laughs> right? Like, I, I'm a hunter, so, like, I like venison. So, fantastic. I can take venison chops and make, like, you know, venison steak or, or, or ground venison. Or, like, I'm a fisherman. I spend a lot of time on the water. So, recently I've been offshore, you know, catching yellowfin tuna. So, I've made, you know, a, a gluten-free, sugar-free, you know, glaze for the tuna. You know, I'm, I'm doing all the things that I normally would, would do. Mm -hmm. Just I'm only able to eat, like quarter of what I normally would be able to eat before, you know, and it's incredibly satisfying to do that because the changes aren't so drastic that I'm missing out on anything. Hmm. Um, you know, I'm, if I want a piece of bread, I have a piece of gluten-free bread or I have, you know, I've gone really essentially it's like, for me, it's almost like a keto gluten-free, you know, sugar-free, carb-free diet, you know, kind of a combination of all those. 
Um, while well, keeping in mind, you know, you need to hit certain numbers, you know, based on my dietitian's recommendations. Nothing wrong with that. Yeah. I'm very satisfied. I'm never hungry. I'm keep my calorie. It's funny. My calories for the first like couple of months, I was barely hitting 900 calories, but I was hitting, you know, 90 grams of protein. My, my, my dietitian was like, you should probably up that to like 1100, 1200 calories. Like it'd be in your best interest to do that. And I was like, right. well, I don't really want to. She's like, you really should. It's like, fine, I'll eat more. Right. <laughs> you know? It is weird it's that time weird. where you're just like, uh, I'll do that. And even now I find sometimes, and especially with the situation you're yeah. in, it's a little easier to graze because yeah. you're at home yep. and doing that. And I try to keep myself busy so yeah. that I'm not doing that. But, and I know that for me still, I'm just past the year mark. Yeah. There's still a bit of that honeymoon. I'm still on that big decline down. But. It's the fact of the snack I'm having Yeah, is, okay, I'm grabbing some, you know, Parmesan chips. Right. As opposed to I'm going in and, and you know, whatever yeah. it is, I'm just having, uh, oh, there's some, some sweet bread sure. or some, you know, yeah. banana loaf or something. Yeah. Um, I know I get that. For me, it's I'm going to go grab beef jerky. Right. Or I'm going to go whatever. have like one piece of mango right. or like, like a half an apple or – you know, a piece of, like a little snack cheese, whatever it is, like those are satisfying. I mean, you know, yeah. I think fruit was the one thing like post surgery I really did miss the most. I was always been, mm. I've always been a big fruit junkie. Yeah. Um, but like it would be like, you know, fifteen slices of mango or two apples or like nine right. clementines. You know, it's a bit much there. Right. So once you start to ration out like rationalize it and be like, okay, I can have one clementine and be right. perfectly fine. And I can have the taste even. Right. You know, I just – we are um, – uh, here in the Maryland area, the peaches, peaches amazing fantastic. right now. Just got some the other day. Cleaned them all yeah. up, sliced them, got them in a bowl. Yeah. Literally grabbed like two tablespoons last night yeah. of, you know, just peaches. But it was enough. Right. It was just – the the thing that I've determined is – that I've got to savor yes. that little portion I'm eating. Because I'm going to get full quick. Right. So I've got to savor what I'm eating. Yeah. Um, the toughest thing is when I'm eating out with other people. Right. Is to not get so caught up in the social uh-huh. that I miss what I'm eating. Yeah. Like all of a sudden I'm getting that thing of, oh, I'm full. Uh-huh. Oh, man. I, I don't remember what I ate. Because I was too busy right. kind of talking. So I had to stop down and really yeah. taste what I'm eating. I haven't done the whole social thing. We've been social distancing due to COVID. Well, right. Because, yeah, right. yeah, you had it right before the right. COVID. So, the like, it, we haven't really done the whole go out and see people. Well, maybe there's a tip for you. <laughs> right, <laughs> you right, do right. That when you get something, you know, yeah. that you really like, it's just make sure you're savoring those bites. Because yeah. you get talking the first time I went to lunch out with some business colleagues. Yeah. And we were eating. And I just realized, like, oh, my full and i'm like what did i just eat because it was only four or five bites of whatever i'm taking yeah. the rest home which is yeah. great but i remember you know. it was funny my um the first weekend after surgery my wife went away like on a i think a ladies trip and my kids went to my parents house i was home alone basically thinking, you know at my surgery on a tuesday i was home alone on a you know friday saturday sunday my buddy's like hey i'm gonna come pick you up let's go play some poker at a friend's house and and i get there and they bought, they were like, oh, we bought you a snack. We figured you could have, you said you could have pudding. They bought me whole sugar pudding. <laughs> I was like, I was like, guys, thank you so much for the thought. I can't have this. They're like, hold on. This is a Jewish household. There's got to be sugar-free jello somewhere. Every Jewish mom has sugar. Lo and behold, the dude ends up whipping me up during, and it didn't set till the end of the poker game. So I ended up coming home with a giant vat of <laughs> sugar-free cherry jello, which I ate for like, you know, a spoonful at a time for like a week. For a week. It was fantastic, you know. There you go. You know, you find those little things to have fun with. And like, you know, they were eating charcuterie and all that. And I just kind of didn't care. Right. The brain, my brain yeah. changed. It just didn't yeah. matter, you know. It's been right. really cool. And discovering all these cool, like, high-protein products in the grocery store that I never would have thought twice about, like the protein bars and the protein puffs and the high-protein this and the right. low-carb that. Like, some of that stuff's really good. It's. I think it's a lot easier probably in the last five years probably, than yeah. it would have been even five or ten years ago Yeah. because of the amount of folks doing that. And even the keto movement, although right. the fat content can be sometimes you have Dicey. to watch that. But sure. still – like it's about the protein mm -hmm. and it's about being protein forward. And so, yeah, yeah. I've been so thankful for finding the yep. things that, you know, and just going, there's so much out there now yeah. that you don't feel like you're having to not have anything. It's, right, you, want. You're not, it's not, you don't feel like you're missing out on anything. Right. You know, it's just been, it's been wild too. Like people's reactions mm -hmm. are mind blowing. Cause like, you know, it's not like you're out socially seeing people. So like they only see you on social media or like hearing that, like, 
I, I've started finally seeing it in myself. Like I, I knew I was losing weight, like, you know, but a hundred pounds, that's like tough to like miss, you know? And, uh, it's been, it's been wild to see that, you know, I got my first haircut post COVID my first beard shave because I still have my big scruffy beard and my long curly hair. Finally got that cut and it was like, okay, right. this is real now. You know, now you can see it. Now you, you can get see. rid of the beard. You can kind of see the face too right, a little exactly. bit more and, and all that. It's so. pretty, uh, it's pretty interesting to see people's reactions and like, People were really excited for me, you know. They they knew I was very open about this procedure with a lot of people. You know, I think everyone's comfort level talking about it is different, but mm-hmm. for me it was like, Yeah, I'm doing this and I'm stoked to do it for my, my kids and my family and my wife's doing it. It was her idea. You know, I give her full credit because it that she was the one who came to me with it. So I have to give credit where credit is due, of course. You, you know, and it's a journey where we luckily we have, you know, this you know, the ability to do this together. Mm-hmm. And I've kind of led the way even though it was her idea, but she knows what to expect and it's really cool to to have that partner in it, you know. Well, I have to give a big thank you to Phil for taking the time to share his story and give us a little insight into his life. And I hope that uh, you got something out of that from he, what he's been doing and what he's gone through since February. It doesn't matter whether you've just had the procedure, if you've had the procedure for years, we can all learn things from each other. And I hope that you will connect with him. We've got his socials in the show notes, so you can go find Phil and let him know you heard about him here on the podcast. And also, That really cool spice company that he's doing with his business partner, one of his musicians. The website is also in the show links, and I tried a little bit of it after uh, we recorded the interview. Wow, it's good. So you might want to check that out and uh, show him a little spice love as well. Okay, well, before we wrap up this week, I want to remind you again that we here at the Bariatric Bros are going to be part of the Walk from Obesity that takes place September the 26th. This is a great walk that raises money for the foundation that really helps battle obesity in the United States. The coolest thing about this, of course, this year is it's going to be virtual, which means you're on your own to do the walk and you can go out and raise some money. But what we'd love you to do is be a part of our team. We've got a team and you know what? We want to do it for the other bariatric bros out there. So why don't you go into the show notes and join the Bariatric Bros podcast walkers team for the walk from obesity coming up in September. All the details are there when you click on the link and we'd love to have you walk with us and raise some money to battle this disease. As we wrap up this week, as always, I want you to hopefully like this episode Follow us on whatever podcast app you're listening to. If they've got a review feature, please review it. And the most important thing is to share it with your friends, is to share it with others in the bariatric community and let them know we're here. We're doing this so other people can uh, get this information and uh, know that there's Folks out there dealing with the same exact things that they're dealing with. Of course, you can follow us on all the socials, uh, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. We're all at Bariatric Bros. Find us there. We'd love to connect with you. And if you'd like to support the show, we do have the new support the show link in the show notes. And you can do that through the Buy Me a Cup of Coffee website. So that's it for this week. Thank you for hanging out with me. I always enjoy our time together and I'm looking forward to doing it again. I'm Mike Alley here on the Bariatric Bros Podcast, where we're living that bariatric life and eating like men.